company tree discipleship. And this is uh, where we will be using this little bookmark uh, so that uh, you would be able to use this uh, to handle a small group. No? So how do you make disciples? This will also tell you. So actually, uh, whether it's one-to-one -one or a small group, you can employ the same thing. So it doesn't have to be different. It doesn't have to be complicated. So that it's simpler. And this can work with same culture, <coughs> and this can work with a cross-cultural situation. So we don't need another material for same culture, and another material for a cross-cultural setting. Just one material, whatever culture, we can use it. A small group, two people, one-on-one, -on -one, or bigger group, we can use the same thing. Simpler, easier. So no, compl not, 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 uh, no need to be complicated. So we will be teaching you simple ways so that in the mission field, you can teach. Even uneducated can actually do it. Because if it's complicated, only those who have gone to school can do it. But the mandate in the Great Commission is for every believer. Even though they are uneducated, they have to make disciples. So we make it simple so that they have something to use. They can do something. Okay? So company three, discipleship. Second Timothy, we already talked about this, commit to faithful, reliable men. Okay? We have already talked about making disciples here. Uh, and I've, I've shared already about all of these stories just to remind you actually that uh, it's very critical to understand all of this uh, in the light of handling a small group. No? So what is important here is the obey. Earlier we say go and make disciples. So we make disciples. And then what's the focus? All nations. And then now the obedience-based discipleship. In other words, when we make disciples, our focus will not just be knowledge, but obedience. Because even if they know a lot, and they are not obedient, nothing will happen. In fact, that's the problem why we have a lot of church splits, competition in the church. Because many people are so knowledgeable, they know a lot of things, and the, only pro the, the problem is, they are not obedient. So they know a lot, but not obedient. So it's, it's very important that they know a lot, but they put it into practice. So obedience base. The little that they know, they practice it. The little that they know, they practice it. So they will not compete. Okay? So what is a company to discipleship? It's made up of two or three people gathered in Jesus' name. Two or three. It doesn't need to be 12. No? Uh, there's a movement now called G12. So you need to be having 12 people to be involved in that. There is what they call pito-pito. No? So there are three people, uh, seven people. For us, it's only three, company three. So simpler because it's, the group is smaller. No? You, the bigger the group, you need more time because more people will be sharing. Three people... Easier, shorter time to meet. And then oftentimes, big group, some people are not open because many will hear. But two or three, then they can be open because it's just a small group. So a lot of advantages actually when you are doing it in a small group. Now, uh, is this biblical? Yes, because uh, Jesus promised us we gather two or three, he will be with us. So what will be the agenda or what will be part of uh, the discussion here three part agenda first sharing about our personal lives so mine what I did was I, I printed it in uh, yellow paper uh, some people they laminate it no? uh, but anyway uh, we, you know you can get from Eloisa the, the original copy so you can actually make one but this is a very simple tool that you can use no the, 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 the way it's being done in the passages of scriptures were, are basically the ones they use in, in those movements that we were talking about. So, three-part agenda, sharing about our personal lives. Let's go to that company three. Okay? Sharing our personal lives. What do we do? Share with each other. 
So, what are you thankful for? What are your concerns, struggles, and challenges? Be honest, vulnerable, uh, and keep all that is shared confidential. So, what do you do first? When you gather, you talk about this, share about your lives. Now, in the context of office, what do you do? So, you can eat together lunch. And then, while you eat lunch, say, what are you thankful for? And then share, and then keep eating. About 15 minutes, you may be done eating and sharing. And then keep your food. Hearing from God. So that's the second. Hearing insights from the Word. Learn by heart one of the passages listed at the back. You have to go this, go to this by sequence. That's the best. Okay? Because it's logically arranged. And then what are you supposed to do? Answer the questions together. What does the story tell us about God? <laughs> what does the story tell us about people? What does it tell us we ought to do? Or am I going to tell what I have learned? So that would be the four questions. Okay? So you can easily remember the four questions. And you will have to use the same four questions in all the passages. And then, pray for each other and those who need Jesus. So conversation with God. Pray for each other's needs. Remember in the uh, sharing time in the beginning, <coughs> you talk about concerns, struggles, and challenges. So pray for each other. Okay? Now, pray for others who need to know Jesus uh, <coughs> and pray for opportunities <coughs> to bring them one step closer to Him. Remember the one step closer scale? Okay? And then pray that you can start a company group with them. And then pray simple, short, simple prayers. Take turns praying, sentence prayers. Depending on the setting, you can pray with your eyes open. Just talk to God. Um, honestly and lovingly to God. So, even in the prayers, it's just simple. No? And again, don't close your eyes if uh, it's not safe to close your eyes. Because it would be very obvious. If you're in restricted countries, you cannot close your eyes because it would be obvious you're praying. But you can just open your eyes and just, Lord, we are so grateful that we can we can meet and share and especially Say it in Tagalog or your own language would be better. Okay? So, in, in the Middle East or in restricted countries, they do this. They pray. Even the police will, will, will be there. No problem. Two, three people. No, don't, don't make it loud. Just open your eyes and they talk. They are, you are just talking. No? Sharing with one another. Somebody asked the question, is it biblical to pray with eyes open? <laughs> well, there's a passage in scriptures which says, watch and pray. <laughs> anyway, so, so, I believe it's just okay. Because really, it's the attitude of the heart. Yeah. It's the attitude of the heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? So, you need to know how to use this. So, at the back, are 30 passages from creation to Christ. And these are arranged logically so that even though they don't have understanding of God, no concept of God, they will begin to appreciate what we will be talking about. Okay? So Genesis 1. What is Genesis 1? That's creation, right? So if you answer the first question, uh, you answer the first question, what does the story tell us about God? So you will be able to see, based on Genesis 1, that even before everything else, there is someone who existed, which is God. And this God is powerful, He's almighty, because He created everything by His powerful word. It's, in Genesis, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did He create the world? Huh? By his powerful word. Let there be light and it came to pass. So what is the story telling us about God? You dig, you, you read. What is the story telling us about God? So go, to, go through the passage. You know, I did this in, in Japan to uh, the pastors there, those Filipinas, married to Japanese. And of course, most of them are, have not been trained in seminary. And what they were telling me is that, wow, we have not seen this before when we read Genesis. Because, you know, when you read it, you have so much in mind. But this time, you just focus on what is the story telling us about God. 
So you just focus. So they, they were just amazed. They said, wow, this is the great, the, the great and awesome God that we serve. This is the God who loves us. This is, so it became so meaningful to them. Now, for us Christians, this is a very common story. Sometimes it has no more meaning. But this is what they discovered. For Muslims, for Buddhists, for atheists, for animists, you know, tribalists, those unreligious people, they were surprised that, that uh, when they hear the story, you know, it creates so much interest in them that they cannot help but teach, tell them to others. Why, why 80,000 churches? Why 4 million believers? Because when they heard the story, who are the person that you will tell, tell what you have learned? I said, oh, this is a good story. I will tell this to my children, the mother would say. Or I will tell this to my husband or my daughter or my son. Or I will tell this to my brother or my parents. So they tell the story. After they hear it, they will tell it to others. And those others, when they hear it, they will tell it to others. And because it's simple, it can just go from generation to generation. Again, one-on-one -on -one, or company tree or a big group, you can use the same questions. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, what does the story tell us about God? God created everything. You can work on that. Next question. What does the story tell us about man? Genesis chapter 1. Never mentioned yet about man. So, when God created, when God existed, man was not existing then. Right? So, that's another realization for, uh, especially from other religion. They said, oh, so we are not from, you know, I, I mean, we, we, uh, we, we, are, we have not existed. God existed first. Anyway, the, what is interesting is when you go to chapter 2. What does the story tell us about God? So now even a Buddhist, a Hindu, or an, an, a, a non-believer there, an, 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 uh, you know, a tribalist, an animist would say, hey, the, it, it says in chapter 2 in the story, what does the story tell us about God? This God who created the world, who existed before everything began, is the same God who created man. So, we are not from apes. We are not from monkeys. We are not from animals. We are God's creation. The, the Hindu or the Buddhist will say, oh, it's not, we are not the result of reincarnation. But we are a creation of God. So, we are now addressing even those with different worldview. So this is the good thing here. So now a Buddhist or a Hindu would say, oh, I'm, I'm God's creation. I'm not a product of reincarnation. And this God who created everything also created me. So what does this story tell us about man? No? So they would better appreciate who they are, that we are God's creation. So that would be part of the discussion. And so when, and you, when it you go to the third question. Uh, so what should I do? No, how do uh, uh, what, what do they do? They said, well, I would rather believe that I'm a creation. And uh, I would rather believe that uh, there's a creator God today. And then who are you going to share what you have learned? Then, oh, I, I already said about last week. So I will share this again. Because this is like the continuation of, of last week's story. So it, it builds up. The story builds up. And even the interest builds up. Now you go to chapter 3. Oh, because it says in Genesis chapter 3. But you notice after Genesis 3, you go to chapter 6 and chapter 12. No, 4 and 5. But chapter 3, what's that? Uh, it's the fall of man, right? So what does the story tell us about God? Well, this God who created man made a command, gave a command. Okay, you can eat everything except this. What does the story tell us about man? Man disobeyed God. Though what do we ought to do? We need to ask God for forgiveness. We need to be reconciled with God. So sometimes in the, uh, at this point, they will say, how can we do that? That's why you need to learn how to share the gospel. Because from here, you will say, well, this is what the Bible calls sin, disobedience. And, and then, you know, you can, you can now uh, tell them that because of this, we are separated from God. But God, because of His great love for us, sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place. So when we, re, we ask God for forgiveness, we receive Christ into our heart, life as Savior and Lord, then we can be reconciled back to God. 
So you can, you can talk about the gospel. And uh, we have seen, even <coughs> they are from other religious background, when they come to chapter 3, some of them will also already make a commitment to Christ. Others, succeeding stories, but it's okay. Root, uh, root, uh, fruit doesn't ripen at the same time. You have, we have mango tree outside, but not ma every ma uh, not uh, on Monday every every fruit will be ripe. Ri will be ripe. Tomorrow maybe others next. Uh, okay. So fruit doesn't ripen at the same time.